Welcome back to another episode of What Kind of Bullshit Will We Find Today? So you fellow Mopar people out there will probably already know where this video is heading. Judging by that length of wire hanging out the front of the fender. This old alternator. And this pile of parts. And this famous piece of Mopar wire in history. That's right, folks. The Fury has succumbed to what could have been a fatal wiring mishap. But luckily, we caught it in time. If you spend any time around these old Mopars, you'll know that they're notorious for having bad wiring issues. Sometimes potentially even catching fire and burning your vehicle to the ground. Luckily, we caught this situation before it got out of hand. A lot of times, the ballast resistor is to blame for most of these wiring issues, but in this case, the ballast resistor seems to be in working condition, so we're just going to leave it in place for the time being. Our issue arose when I swapped the alternator out and we did not have any charging voltage at the battery. So I began diagnosing the issue and eventually traced it down to a bad wire in the bulkhead connector as you can see this bottom plug that goes in the bulkhead is missing the fusible link that was plugged into here which in turn plugs back into this red wire which in turn comes back to the starter relay and eventually the battery the problem began when I didn't have any charging voltage at all and so I left it sit overnight, did some research on it, come back out here the next day, and the problem had progressed to a no ignition, no spark at the ignition system. So after verifying that I had no spark, I began tracing down some wires and eventually landed at this bulkhead connector here. And if I wiggled that wire in the bottom right hand corner there while it was still plugged into the bulkhead I instantly had ignition spark again so I knew we had issues there now keep in mind that this fusible link is what was in that empty slot there and it plugged into the fat red wire right here now, I'm not knocking a fusible link by any means they're designed to uh, get hot and basically burn in two Therefore killing the connection between these two wires and Supposedly supposed to save your vehicle, but this one has Seen it's better Days, I mean this thing is like a piece of Spaghetti noodle and the connection that it was making here at the plug-in was slim to none so while I was tracing down those wires I found some surprises under the dash as well I'm in the process now of bypassing the amp meter on the instrument cluster and we're just gonna convert over to a volts gauge so while I had the instrument cluster out I got to looking around to the rest of the wiring in the car and discovered some naked wires on the flasher the emergency flasher switch so I addressed those took care of that well I'll throw a clip of the video in here and now I'm in the process of putting it back together as you can see I went ahead and opted to put a new voltage regulator on here I'm probably going to switch this over to a this is a glass style fuse coming off the regulator here going to the ballast resistor I'm probably going to switch that over to a blade style fuse and we're going to go through and eliminate some of these unnecessary wires. As you can see over time, somebody has definitely had issues with this car. This is the original. Let me see. This is this is a this is a replacement wire that somebody has has added to the field side of the voltage regulator. 
You can see the original here. I plugged the original back up. So I don't know if they were having continuity issues with that wire and just decided to run a new piece over to the alternator. But I've tested both of those and they seem to be good. So if at all possible, I'm gonna stick with the original wire. I'm gonna pull that extra wire out. This new green wire is for the tack signal. They already had some holes popped in this grommet here. I don't know what they had powering off of it. There was a, a red wire and a brown wire going through there already. But the red wire ended up going to nowhere on both ends, so I just removed that. And as you can see, I've got the bulkhead connector popped out of the firewall so I can clean that up, put some dielectric grease in there. I'm gonna do the same for these plug-ins. I'm gonna clean these up, put some new grease in there and hopefully not have any more issues out of that this brown wire is currently going to my electric fan which i've got it switched on a negative relay that way there's no power going through that actual grommet it's no this is just a ground wire so if that shorts out that's not going to be any big deal but like I said, I went to O'Reilly's, picked up some 10 gauge wire. I'm just gonna drill me a hole and put a grommet in it here. And we're gonna connect that wire from the bulkhead inside to this wire. And that way it just bypasses this plug. You'll still be able to un unplug that plug if necessary. I know a lot of people decide to drill, drill that out and feed the wire straight through but on the off chance that i have to unplug that wire harness again i just want to be able to easily unplug it without having to cut any wires and it's not going to hurt nothing to go ahead and put an extra grommet in here or possibly run that 10 gauge through here and go straight to this one with a fuse in the middle so we're not getting rid of the fusible link we're just kind of upgrading it one thing that's always kind of irked me about these fusible link type deals is they don't never seem to use the same color like the wire here is red the wire coming from the inside is red but they put a black or blue fusible link in the middle i mean why not just stick with the same color wire so i went ahead and picked up some 10 gauge red and I got an inline fuse we can add to it. So that way it will be fused on the off chance something happens. It should pop that fuse. Well, diagnose the issue, correct the problem if there is one, and put a new fuse in it. Should be back up and running. Like I said, I'm probably going to switch this over to this style of fuse holder as well. That way. I got plenty of those blade fuses. So let's get busy. If you're wondering, I did get the car running. I'm going to wait until we get this charging issue sorted out. And then we're going to go through the whole carburetor and intake setup. I still got to build a throttle cable bracket and whole throttle setup, kick down cable. But we're going to go through that after I sort out this electrical issue. As you can see, it's not pretty in here. I've got wires running everywhere. I've got the fuse box hanging out from underneath the dash so I can examine it, clean everything up there. While I've got all this wiring going on, I decided to go ahead and wire up those three gauges and the tack. So once we get this wiring stuff sorted out, the only thing that I'm gonna have to left to wire, hopefully, is gonna be the radio. So that's not that big of a deal. Give y'all a shot of what it looks like with the bulkhead connector back in the firewall. I still got to cut that piece of wire loom that I'm going to put over that. Just to be extra sure. But it looks pretty factory. I mean, I've seen way worse jobs. Point in case. I don't know who's been messing with the wiring on this car, but if you notice that flasher relay there. When I got to plug in the 
bulkhead connector back up. A piece of tape fell off of that. It's not even electrical tape. It's more like, uh, I don't know, masking tape from 1970 or something. So as you can see, a naked wire there on the flasher relay. That is the second and third piece of wire that I found trimmed back like that. You know somebody did that on purpose because it had a piece of tape over it. I mean, what was they trying to accomplish? I don't know, but let me put a connection in between here and solve this problem while I'm down here. Okay, y'all, I've got that piece of wire loom on it, zip tied now. That's probably overkill. You shouldn't have to go that far, but being that it's in an area where your foot's constantly pushing against the brake pedal or the emergency brake, I didn't want to take any chances, and it's kind of tucked up out of the way. It's up under the dash of the car, so shouldn't have any issues out of that. Fixed the naked wire on the flasher relay, and if y'all are curious, I did the same repair on the amp meter bypass right there. I got to put a piece of wire loom over top of that, but it's done pretty much the same way as that wire I just showed you. So let me finish that one up and move on to the next thing. If y'all have never seen these heat shrink butt connectors, I'll give you a look at how they work. You can pick these up on Amazon. I got three or four boxes of these because somehow I'm always running out of one particular size, but they're relatively inexpensive. You get a whole case of them, it's like 250 in there. And then I just pick up a variety pack of heat shrink tubing from Harbor Freight. Okay, as you can see, I got the fusible link here. 10 gauge, the wire's already stripped back. I got a 10 gauge male butt connector. When you insert your wire, you want to make sure it's fully seated into the connector before you crimp it. As you can see, I've got this one buried in there. So now let me put a good crimp on it. I almost forgot, before you put your connector on, I always like to put an extra piece of heat shrink tubing on my connections. So don't forget to add that on your wire before you crimp your connector down because after you crimp your connector, it won't be able to fit over top of it. If you're looking for a good pair of wire strippers, crimpers, I picked these Craftsman up from Lowe's about a year ago. These things have been a lifesaver. I've got several different pair. I've got the automatic strippers, but they're just kind of awkward and clumsy. These fit in tight spaces. They're sharp. They've never let me down before. Uh, you can crimp anything from 10 gauge up to 22 gauge and even plug wires. So, check them out at Lowe's. What I like to do if I'm not working on a bench is I'll go ahead and preload my connector into the crimper at the determined wire size and just lightly hold it there. That way the, the crimping tool is already set on the crimp section of the connector and then I'll just push the wire into that. If you're working on a workbench, you can do it a different way, but I found that this is the best way when you're doing things, just two hands. I don't know if this is in frame or not, I can't see. Give it a good crimp. Once I get it crimped, I always like to give it the good old tug test. If you can tug on it without it coming loose, it should be fine. Now we're ready to heat shrink this thing down, so let me grab my torch real quick. Now I know I should be using a heat gun for this process, but for this example, we're just going to use this butane torch. It works fine. Just got to be careful not to burn your wire. See if I can't do this without knocking the camera over. Get this lighter to light first. All you want to do is just lightly heat it. You don't really want the flame really touching it and you'll see it start to shrink as it shrinks i like to roll mine around 
That way it closes evenly all the way around. And it's not a race, y'all. It takes, with this lighter, it takes a little time to do it without burning it. As you can see, it's starting to close up on itself now. One thing I like to do towards the end is melt some of that plastic into the actual connection itself. As you can see, that is a crimped and heat shrink connection. That thing is waterproof. Shouldn't let no corrosion in there. But just to be on the safe side, I like to let mine cool down for a minute. And then we'll slide this extra piece of heat shrink tubing over it. Just to cover the connection there. And we'll do the same. Heat this down. Same process. Just lightly heating it. Rolling it. Now what I find a lot of times on this deal is that the heat shrink tubing has to be slightly bigger than the wire so it won't necessarily close all the way down. This tubing's only designed to shrink to half its size. But if you take your time, you can get it to close up pretty nicely. If you don't burn it. So that is how I finalize my wire connections. And... In my opinion, it helps it look a whole lot better if you just take your time and double double check your work, heat shrink all your connections. This makes everything look that much cleaner. And it's well protected. So luckily for me, this female, I mean this male connection fits into the factory female connection on the factory harness. Here's another example of those heat shrink butt connectors. A little bit up close to you. I've done crimped this one, shrunk it down. I know they make connectors uh, connecting out there now that has solder built into it. But I just had an overstock of these, so might as well use what I got. These are way better than the old style butt connectors anyways. So let me slide this heat shrink tubing over this and we'll finalize this connection. And there we go. I know that looks like a lot of heat shrink tubing and it is, but in my opinion, it adds a little extra protection to the wire and also a little strength to the wire in an area where it may be getting bent around or jostled around so as you can see this male will plug into this female of the inline fuse holder and we can put some loom on this and call it the good if you're curious about any exposed metal on these connections as you can see those connections are fully seated together there is no exposed metal nowhere so you can 100% run it like this if you wanted to I just like to go to one step further and put some wire loom on it that way a little extra peace of mind with these on Mopars you can never be too safe with the wire 
especially when you're messing with the burn me down function of them.